So this is a death battle, an actual real death battle that came out earlier today with Makima from Chainsaw Man and Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. And most likely when it comes to recency and, you know, just the affiliation of, you know, certain characters, a lot of people are going to be very well acquainted with Gojo as a character, especially with manga readers and anime only as well for Jujutsu Kaisen. Even though Chainsaw Man in general came out last year, you know, there is a lot of mystery around Makima in terms of her powers, her scaling, and going right into this death battle, I knew it was going to be a very difficult battle to kind of compare these two because their abilities are very questionable. They're very vague to a degree in, in some cases. And so I was legitimately curious when this was announced that these two characters would be pitted up against each other. And, you know, I sat down, I watched this death battle, I watched the, you know, the facts of both characters of what Makima's bringing to the table, what Gojo's bringing to the table, and for the most part, this is a legitimately incredible, well thought out video. Like, it is actually really well done in terms of just bringing all the knowledge and stuff. Now, I don't know exactly when this was like wrote because like in the process of when they were doing the research for this and writing and all that it's very likely this was pre-recent stuff in the manga like if anyone is a manga you're not going to directly talk about completely of all that but I am going to talk about spoilers in this video just FYI but the point is is that um when it comes to the recent stuff in the manga, you know, we have found a little bit more out about Gojo and his powers, his limits, etc. And so I wonder if the writing of this death battle was pre that. I am legitimately curious. But regardless of that, though, this is a very well thought out video. And arguably, I see nothing wrong with, you know, the actual victor of this. Gojo wins, obviously. I mean, that's what most people would assume from just this fight. When you pit someone up like Gojo that has this personality of, you know, I'm the best, you know, I throughout the heavens, I am the honored one. You know, just, he has a massive ego. And when you put him up against someone like Makima, that you know, is all about remaining in control, you know, someone that has to be powerful, someone that has to, you know, maintain manipulation and grip on everyone around her. You know, Gojo is someone that you just you can't control. It, it's been very fundamentally clear even in Jujutsu Kaisen that just Gojo is a loose cannon you can't control a man that is literally this powerful he just he has such a big ego that even someone like Makima that is the control devil would not be able to just bring him to heel, so to speak. So that completely makes sense to me, because I want to remind everybody of a few little details. So Makima is capable of controlling those that she believes to be lesser than herself. But it's very clear by just Gojo's interactions, how he reacts, and just his demeanor, his ego, everything about him, this one base ability that Makima has is definitely not going to work on Gojo. I, I, I instantly think that, because even if Makima at the start thinks she might be better than him, there's no way because that's going to work because of Gojo's ego and his presentation and how he won't bow, etc. She will not be able to use that one main ability. Even though it's a very vague concept, I automatically knew off the gate just because of their egos, it would clash too much and that would not work. So we always had to fall back on when going into this fight, most likely to her contracts, her, you know, base devil abilities, etc. And I'll talk about that in a second. But um, overall, getting back into the topic of the video, it is a very good video. And this whole animation and fight sequence with the voice acting, very well done. And honestly, at the end of the day, even if I'm going to say some things that kind of disagree with this video, I will talk about those. I think that in the end, I am satisfied with the way this video is presented. There was a lot of thought put into this and I'm not necessarily upset with Gojo winning. I, I think that makes sense, all things considered, when you look at just how vague Makima's overall potential is. So let's segue into that, since I've already been kind of slightly mentioning that. So, if we look at everything on paper, what was presented in this video, Makima, yeah, would lose, straight up. Gojo has the strength. He has, like, hollowed purple, red, blue. He has reverse curse technique to be able to pretty much regenerate almost indefinitely. Even though we see in the manga as of late, there is technically a limit. He still is way beyond the normal faculties of a regular fighter. He definitely was the strongest of the present time. Like, regardless of the outcome of what happened in the manga, he really was powerful. And I don't think anyone could really deny his absolute overwhelming strength. So, because of that, you know, 
yes, he does pretty much on paper. His just base stats of what he has done is ridiculous. I mean, that's not even including the ability to just erase people from existence using Limitless, the domain expansion, all these different type of things. It makes, like, perfect sense why just looking at everything and what Makima has presented even in the manga, why he would win. 100%. I, I see that. So, with that out of the way, we gotta talk about this. So, Makima has contracts, and the Death Battle does mention this. And they do mention that even with her contracts, she would still lose. Like, they do a hypothetical here, while Gojo is fighting and all that, and he uses, like, Limitless on her, and, like, just overloads her with information to really just, like, shut down her brain, so to speak. You know, even if she was to hypothetically navigate all this information to different citizens in Japan thanks to her contract with the Prime Minister, eventually there would just be people that she would run out of. Like, everybody in Japan would actually die, and Makima, in the end, would die as well. So, that makes sense. Since technically the information being flooded into her is limitless, I do think that makes sense for her to lose in that regard. But there's a few things to factor in. The thing about Makima's ability that a lot of people tend to forget about isn't necessarily her transferring the exact thing to the other person. Like, you know, this, this, you know, video does clarify that, but they do use examples like if, you know, Makima, let's say, uh, gets cut in half, someone's gonna get cut half in the, the toilet or something. You know, they, they do stuff like that. But the thing is, is that Makima's contract, actually what her ability is, is that she puts, like, the, um, the illness or, like, the damage that's done to her is, is afflicted to a random citizen in Japan as an illness or an ailment. That's what she does. And... It pretty much lets us know that it's not necessarily the exact same thing. So we don't know how Unlimited Void, or like, you know, how the Void and Limitless would actually affect her or what it would do to Japanese citizens. We have no idea exactly what damage they would take. We know they, they would die, but we don't know if they would just, like, they would, their brain would shut down, they would have a heart attack. We don't really know. And see, this gets into the layers of the vagueness of Makima's abilities and contracts. It's very hard to scale her abilities, because not even Fujimoto, the offer of Chainsaw Man, really has clarified much of that. It's just so super, super vague. And so, the reason why I'm even going around this loop to talk about that is that one of the counterpoints they make, and the reason why Gojo wouldn't die, even though they say that, you know, they do it for sake to put Makima and Gojo on the, you know, this uh, level playing field, is that curses and demons are the same thing, and that, you know, basically Makima is considered like a curse, and so it makes sense, you know, that they wanted to have an even playing field, and they're in the same Japan. Which means that Gojo would be under the exact same contract as, you know, what the Prime Minister signed with Makima. So he effectively would be a Japanese citizen. That's pretty much what they said with this video. So eventually, Gojo would die randomly to an attack that he commits to Makima. However, what they clarify is, is if he, like, used, for instance, you know, Limitless and, you know, overloaded her with infinite information, he would not be affected by it. And in a way, I see what they're saying. Like, I understand what they're trying to say in the video. That, yeah, since it's his own technique and he's immune to that technique, he wouldn't be affected by it. I, I agree with that. That makes sense. But the problem here is, is that, as I said, her ability is very vague. It, you know, turns the attack against her into a random illness, element, etc. It isn't necessarily the people in Japan getting hit by, like, any of Gojo's techniques. They just, they might have a heart attack or something. Just once again, it's very vague. And so you can see the problems here in terms of scaling. So I see why Gojo won, because it's really hard to put that in perspective. I feel like, you know, honestly, if they wanted a really interesting death battle, like really close, they could have done like, you know, uh, Kenjaku versus Makima. I think that would have been an incredible death battle. That would have been an amazing fight to see. But obviously, we're not going to get that since we got this. But... Back on topic, though, that's just one thing to mention when it comes to the overloaded senses and information. Yes, Makima would die, okay? But Gojo would probably die, too, because of just the transfer of the technique, since we don't know exactly what would happen there. So it would end in a stalemate, a draw between the two. Both of them would die. But theoretically, Makima would live, because even though she would be dead, she would just be reborn as a new control devil. So... In the end, you know, she would technically win. At least she would live on to some degree. But anyways, it would end in a draw. So, 
moving past that, we need to talk about another ability that they kind of really didn't dive into, which was Makima's other contracts, like with Angel and all that. And we need to talk about the Spear of Longness, or however you pronounce that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in the manga, basically towards the end when Makima is fighting Denji slash Chainsaw Man, she summons a spear for using, you know, 1,000 years of life, human life. And she gets this giant spear that is literally able to pierce space like you literally see this like it's coming through this hole and you see stars and stuff behind it and it pierces space and it does massive damage to chainsaw man slash denji and what they even stated within this video like the video they made that makima technically would be slightly faster than gojo and the spear could be dodged by chainsaw man but the damage that it was done to him was ridiculous. So once again, this is a very vague moment, and we don't really know the scale of this. But we can assume, since this is obviously the Spear of Longness, once again, hopefully I'm saying that right, we can assume that is a direct reference to, you know, Ava. That, that's a big one. If anyone knows about Ava and what it does, it's basically, like, able to take down godlike beings, etc. But it's also based on popular myth. Like, the Spear of Longness is known for many different things as a holy relic or whatever, a holy spear, lance, and it is literally used to kill demons, gods, archdemons, a, a godlike being, so to speak. That is what it is designed for. And what would Gojo, someone that's like, throughout the heavens, I am known as the Honor One, what would he be technically clarified as? Pretty much a god, okay? So, this spear most likely could probably hit Gojo. It, it probably could, because of what its design purpose is. But once again, the feats of it is just incredibly vague. But all we have to go on is what Fujimoto based it off of. He based it off of Ava and based it off of literally the mythological like spear, the Holy Lance itself. Like, you could just look this up and find it out. It's exactly what Makima stuff was based on. So... All that considered, or not Makima is based on, the spear was based on. So, with all that considered, you know, they didn't really even talk about that. They kind of showed a brief moment of it, but they didn't really get into it because, once again, vague concept. But, um, anyways, moving past that as well, there's other little details to discuss. I mean, Makima, she has, like, this ability, like she said, she has the ability to, um use Angel's contract to summon different weapons or abilities, etc. Like, she literally does it here. And so, if she used a thousand years, imagine if she used even more than a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, etc. Just imagine the strength of said weapon. So, all these things considered, we just don't know the upper limit to what Makuma is capable of, and I don't even think we'll ever get that answer, because Fujimoto doesn't really care about power scaling or whatever. But uh, it is just something to factor into. I, I do think in the end result, not factoring in all this, it makes sense why Gojo won. But I do think that uh, because of that, I just I don't think Makimo is a proper fight here because of that. There's just too much vague. But uh, yeah, anyways, I know it seemed like I can complain, but this is, a like I said, a very well thought out video. They did a very good job with this with the sprite work, the art animation. Very impressive, and I'm looking forward to their next death battle. But I wanted to weigh in and talk about it because, you know, honestly, I don't think Makima would have went down as easy. I legitimately don't. I mean, even hypothetically, if we don't want to call, like, Hollow Purple or Limitless as an attack on her, etc., I do think that, uh, you know, some of her techniques could potentially counter it. But that that's my two cents on the matter. But um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Be safe, stay healthy. She be out.